mercy this morning. Hallelujah. Let's see I'm living in Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. I'm living in Jesus.
there and rode home. Samson and rode home to his sister he had named Alice and said, he said, Alice, nothing don't work here. <laughs> Amen. He said, there is no money. There is hardly any food. And there's no shelter. You can't find any anywhere. He said, I've come to the conclusion if it, that it's God's church and feeds through with it, so am I. That's what he wrote right to us. Two weeks later, she got a new telegram. Said, Alice, all is well, all is joy. All is peace in this knowing. He did not tell me to get in the vine. He told me he put me in the vine. He did not tell me to try to stay in the vine. He simply told me, abide where he put me. And he said, since I've learned to abide, I've found that everything I need flows right into my hand because I no longer struggle to stay anywhere, but I remain where He connected me. Can you say, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad the struggle's over. The very moment that Jacob wrestled down and got his grip, and the Lord said, you turned me loose because the days break. Brother, I want you to know there's a day has broken. And the day star has arisen in our hearts. And the Lord said, uh, uh, Jacob said, well, tell me, what's your name? And God said, I didn't come here for that. I come to ask you who you were. What's your name? He said, oh, I, I'm Jacob. And the Lord said, no, you're not. I come to tell you who you really are. Your name's Israel. <laughs> You know what Israel means? The prince of God. He said, for as a prince you have prevailed and found power with God. Let me tell you something about Gentile and Jew. That's natural terms. That's not God terms. That's man-made terms. Israel's a God-made term. God named Israel. And it don't have anything to do with me being born to a certain race of people. But it has everything to do with me touching that realm Amen. where I finally prevail in my way of thinking and my faith. And I say, dare to say to the Lord, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm not letting you go. I know what this ride entails and I know that I'll have to hang on and a lot of changes are going to come to my house but I'm not turning loose because of that. We're intimidated by change. We we know if we go all the way that a whole new world will open up to us. And even though we hit our toe on that same broke chair every morning, it's still familiar to us and we kind of got used to bumping that toe. We don't want it to get where it ain't sore because it reminds us of that. That's familiar. But I'm willing to kiss familiarity good by this morning and have an encounter with truth and with God even if I know I'll risk it today going home and my life never being the same again me never being able to think the same or talk the same or believe the same or walk the same I will risk all of that for just one enlightening truth Glory. to enter my heart today and shed light on the real reason why God's ordained us to be in this place. Because it's more than us shaking a few hands, nodding the head, and saying bless you. We, there's a real purpose of God to be discovered right here. In the next few moments, God can reveal to every one of you your hidden purpose. Can you say amen? You've got a date with destiny. I mean a date with destiny. You've got a preordained place in God where all truth meets with all speculation and opinionation. Because in the end, folks, your opinion and my opinion ain't worth a nickel when it's compared to the truth of God. So I'm willing to risk it all this morning. I'm willing to lay myself open before Him. Because I know He can't do me nothing but good. I'm not afraid to lay open before Him today. And I, <laughs> glory, glory. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 No, 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 no. 
Oh, hallelujah. 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 Sister Shirley, obey the Lord this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, said the Lord, because I've seen your desire to lay yourself open before me. I am going to fill you this day with a blessing that you have never had, even in your past life. But I am going to fill you with a new sensation of my presence that you've never known. Before, and you will leave this place boldly proclaiming that something good has happened in the house today. by anybody it's your own mind that separates you no outside force cause there's no other power to a believer but the power of the most high God that's the only power that exists in the life of a believer the power of the most high God let your soul be subject unto the higher powers this morning yield your whole being to that realm of anointing yield your whole being to that realm of truth yield your whole being let the river of God come up now and wash away everything let it wash away let it wash away everything Everything, everything that that that, that stands in 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 a, 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 a appropriate, you know, a probation, right? When wheels go in probate, when when someone passes and they hadn't been settled, now you can write a will the right way, and it'll instantly be turned to the right person. But the general amount of wills are not written that way. And there's a time of probate and a period of waiting when everybody has to wait to see if they were thought of or not. And I want you to know Jesus has left no such probate on his will. How do you know? Because he got up the third day to oversee and accept. Amen. He got up to see it through. He got up to make it happen. He got up to oversee it. Most people that die don't get up. But he got up. He got up and read his own will and read his own testament. To the church I leave life. To the church I leave power. To the church I leave my goodness. Oh, glory to God. To the church I leave my authority. To the church I leave my name. To the church I leave. Hallelujah. My spirit. My Holy Ghost. We can't run around today acting like we're trying to get. We've already received of His fullness. Have we all received? What part of fullness don't you understand? Are you listening to me? What part of fullness has not dawned on you yet? You run around and thinking you need to receive. You've already received. But I can tell you the going in ain't the problem. It's the giving out of what's going in. We must release. We must release that flow. Amen. Be seated, but keep worshiping. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy. And Barbara, come get a mic and sing that chorus with me this morning. And let's worship God thinking about all the days of our lives. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow. <laughs> All the days. Oh, come on, son of my life. My life.
but himself. That's all he can produce because Genesis said a seed produces after its own kind and the life isn't in the dirt and the life isn't in the tree and the life isn't out children the plant but the life is in the seed. Is that what the word said? The life is in the seed. If the life's in the seed and I've got the seed in me then I've got the ability and the power and all it takes to produce that very creative life of God. Both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are one. Therefore, are for this cause, he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Jesus in John the 12th chapter was approached, his disciples were, by a group of people who were Greeks. They weren't even Jews. They weren't even of the covenant. They weren't even of the law of Moses. But something in them said, we're supposed to know this man. We're supposed to relate to him somehow. Something about him is sparking something in us. And they showed up. And out of term, and out of uh, order, and out of question because there was another feast going on and they really shouldn't have even been in the vicinity to approach with such questions. But one of them got a hold of Philip and said, uh, listen, we will see Jesus. We, we must see Jesus. <laughs> we would see Jesus. John chapter 12. And Philip ran and told Andrew. And then Andrew ran and told Jesus. There's a group out here. They're not of our kind. They're not of our sector. They're not of our race. They're not of our... I'll tell you, you get in God, there won't be a prejudiced bone in your body. Every wall you've got will fall when the Lord comes into your spirit. And you say amen. They, they really don't fit. They don't. Let me tell you, I got a word from the Lord just then, just that instant. God said, I'm getting ready to take all them that don't fit. Them that aren't rounded off on the corners yet. Them that still have a sharp edge. Them that don't quite say it just right. Them that don't quite see it on the right key. Them that don't quite know when to hold their shout and when to turn it loose. But he said, I'm bringing them to the forefront. And they're packing out. We want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to see Jesus. And so they cried out, we see Jesus. And Jesus' answer is, is just blind. Just mind blinded. It's just boggling to the head what he would say. We'll see Jesus. Jesus said these very words in John 12. Now I'm still in Hebrews 2. I'm just on the side there. He said, Set the corn of wheat. That was his answer. Except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone. I dare you to raise your hand and say Jesus was that corn of wheat. <laughs> That's he that is sanctified, or he that sanctified. But wait a minute, there's another part of that verse. Them, or they, who are sanctified. Well, Jesus will finish it. He said, and if it dies, it'll bring forth huh? much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. When did that happen? Well, they planted him in the ground. He was a seed, and they buried him. But he didn't remain a seed. That's the glory of God. That's the trouble. Paul said, thou fool, you don't reap that thing which you plant. That thing goes under, but it comes up in another form. It's sown in weakness, but it's raised in power. It's sown in corruption, but it's raised in incorruption. You sow not that thing which shall be. Look up here and listen to me preach out of 1 Corinthians 15 in a light you've never seen it before. You ain't never sowed what shall be. You sowed the form of possibility. The form of expression. The form of His express image is sown in you. But it don't remain in the seed. Are you hearing me? He said it 
if it don't die, it don't produce. He died. Then he opened up on the third day. Not only the tomb, but the womb. The tomb became the womb of all his ordained creation. And the first of a new breed walked out and put their feet in the earth. Not just Jesus as one man in the flesh who could only go so far in that flesh, who could only heal so many in that flesh, who could only travel to such a distance in that flesh. But now he had woke up something that had been asleep for many, many, many long years. He woke up a new breed. They were called a new creation. Oh yes. And when he come forth out, he birthed a whole new race, a whole new manifestation in this earth and this time it isn't man walking around blind and trying to find his way it's people who've been enlightened by the Holy Ghost Amen. except a corn of wheat fall in the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it brings forth much fruit they're all standing around there wondering what in the world he's talking about and said they didn't understand it and finally the eternal voice from within him boomed out so loud that everybody shook when they heard it and spit my man out. Amen. And <laughs> glory. That's better than Brother Walker put one under his tongue and it was a button. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> They had the preacher there preaching for him and he always put them in under his tongue. When it dissolved, he quit preaching. And he slipped his hand in his pocket and got an extra, where he had an extra button to his coat and he put it in under his tongue. Amen. And he wouldn't shut up. Finally, he flipped that thing out and bit on it to see if it was a mint. It wasn't a mint, it was a button. But I just spit a little piece of mint out. I didn't have a button. Amen. Glory. A voice so loud, nobody couldn't take it. They trembled all over. Jesus had said this thing so plainly. You can read it in John 12. Father, glorify thy name. Ooh, he didn't mean on me. He knew who he was. He meant let these come into that glory. Let these experience this same realm that I brought to earth. I brought them the way out. I brought them the way in. I brought them the truth. I'm the way. I'm the truth. Thomas stand there, Lord, we know not whether you go. Neither know we the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Glory to God. In John 10, he said, I'm the door. Hallelujah. And you've got to come in by me. And if you come in by me, then my Father's ordained you. And if he's ordained you, no man can pluck you out of my hand. Your, your existence is secure. I'll hold you here. I won't let anything rob you of this glory. If you're in me and I'm in you you'll ask what you will and it shall be done unto you hallelujah and so the Lord Jesus said glorify thy name oh he didn't mean glorify it to me he already had stood on the mountain and told his disciples you won't see death till you see the kingdom come in power and while he prayed the glory of God came from within him and illuminated and lit up and shined until his raiment was white like blistering sunshine in the midst of all of that the disciples had seen his glory but can it be that God did not withhold a thing from His people but the very same essence, effulgence, and shining glow of His life is deposited? Thank you, Lord. I believe it is because I believe it was Peter's shadow. I believe it was the divine expression of what was within him. And when God gets ready to talk, He's going to talk through us. That's what prophecy is. Let me tell you something. In these days, the church needs more prophecy, more tongues and interpretation than it's ever had in its history. And the crazy thing is, some of them don't even have messages in tongues no more. That can't be. That's got to stop. 
we've got to hear. Not from a man, we've got to hear from God. And God's going to speak through man. Can you say praise the Lord? Our trouble is we're still out there like Moses trying to get God to shake the top of that mountain. And he ain't going to do that no more because he moved off the top of that mountain. He don't live on Mount Sinai no more. He's come to Mount Sinai. Glory. Hebrews 12 says you've not come to a mountain that can't be touched that burns with fire whose voice shook it and Moses said I've seen him quake in fear but ye have come on the Mount Sinai to the innumerable companies of angels the spirits have just been made perfect glory to the firstborn church of the living whose name are written in heaven hallelujah see that you refuse him not see that you reject him not See that you turn not a deaf ear. But he said, open up your heart and said everything that can be shaken will be shaken for the removal of that which is shaken. But you have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Wherefore serve God acceptably and with all fear for our God is a consuming fire. Lord, while I sit in this fire, this is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn up every foolish foul. I started to say every foolish foul and fungal thing is trying to weed out that realness. Trying to confuse me. For God is not the author of confusion. And God has not given me the spirit of fear. But He's given me power and of love and of a sound. Oh, now I shall die. Don't just glorify it on me. That ain't why Jesus said it. When He said glorify thy name, the Lord answered that Spirit of God spoke out of Him and said in that booming voice, I have glorified it and I will glorify it. Unless we have any confusion on the matter, Jesus stopped, turned, looked at the disciples and said, that voice came not for my sake. But that came for your sakes. I want you to know that hallelujah, we've come to the hour when the Father is glorifying His name in us. John 17, parallel, runs right parallel with John 12 and John 10. Jesus said, The hour has come, glorify thou me with that glory of thine own self which you had before the world was. He said, Amen. Jesus' beautiful name in full is said this way, Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? That's His full identity. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, the eternal one. The one who has no beginning or no ending of days. He's the ancient of days that Daniel saw sitting on the throne. He's the fourth man in the fire furnace. He's the burning bush. He's the ram of sacrifice that Abraham found on Mount Moriah. He's El Elyon. He's El Shaddai. He's Jehovah. Rapha. I'm the Lord that he would be. I'm talking about the Lord now. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's a God of peace who bids us Farewell, fair weather at all times. A ship that stays on course. One that doesn't alter even when a little wind blows. One that begins and arrives at its total destination. Straight is the gate. Narrow the way. Narrow way refers to a ship that goes in between two rocky Cliffs that are so narrow he can't turn around. There's no room to turn around. I don't want God to give me no turning around room. I haven't found a place yet to park. Have you? I've been driving this buggy quite a while now. And I haven't found nowhere yet. He won't let you rest. There's no place to park. Because I'm in the right way. And I can't sit down. I've got to keep going. Can you say amen? Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That's not passion at all. That's entering the Lord's rest. The Lord's rest is doing the work of God. If you do the work of God in the anointing, amen, 
just about the time you think you gave the last dose, He'll pour you so full. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Well, Lord, eternal one, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rea, He's the Lord, our shepherd. He's a shepherd of the sheepfold. Amen. Jehovah Nisi, He's a banner of victory. Raise your hands, Moses. I can't hold them up no more. Aaron said, you will. Her said, oh yes you can. If you'll sit on the rock, we'll hold up the banner. That's the word for some of you today. Quit teetering and tottering thinking you've got to hold the load up. Sit down on the rock and let the Lord lift your arms up. The Bible said, raise up the feeble hands. Confirm those weak knees. Oh, praise the Lord. I've got a banner and this banner over me is love. He, she said, the little woman of the song of the song said he brought me into his house. He sat me down at his table. She said, when he did, he sent for such a smell I got drunk on his love. I couldn't even sit up no more. Hallelujah. The love of God overwhelmed me so. She said, I'm sick of love. I can't stand it no more. He's loved me so much that I can't even get up and leave this table. Oh, I see why. He spread a whole banner over me. And that banner is love. Hallelujah. Not any kind of love will do. It's the the everlasting love of a father, a friend, loving at all times. Hallelujah. It's the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You can't mush up enough of this love. It's Holy Ghost love. It's love, 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 the unspeakable gift. Somebody say praise the Lord. I show you all 12 of these gifts and they're powerful and they're holy and they're wonderful and they'll work in the church. But I want to talk to you about a more excellent way. I want to tell you that if you don't have love, you can speak with the tongues of men and angels. But if that love isn't working through you, you're the sounding breath and a tinkling symbol. Love won't if not. Love won't embarrass nobody. Love won't try to jilt nobody out of anything. Now abide faith, hope, and love these three. And the greatest of these oh, is love. Love that will love them right through anything they're going through. Love that won't snub nobody. Love that won't step over the beggar. Love that won't keep them that are down, down a little further. Uh, love that'll restore such a one. My brethren, if you see your brethren overtaken in a fall, restore such a one in mercy. Somebody say praise the Lord. That real love. You know, I've always said Pentecostals are the only one that devour their own. I didn't really say that. Paul said that. He said, you bite and devour one another. Amen. And I want you to know, oh, praise the Lord, His banner over us this morning is a welcome sign. It isn't to get away from here. It isn't, it isn't a banner stating what latest fad of religion is coming to town. It's a banner of welcome. It's a banner that says, come to the Father's house. Come to my table and eat. I have prepared for you a feast. That's what the song said. I want to commune with you. Let me show myself to you. Come to my table and eat. See, I'm talking about Lord. But he's not just, I'm talking about Him glorifying His name. I want Him to glorify all of His name. I want to be able to see Him from the beginning all the way through. When the fact is it would be hard to find his beginning because there ain't one. He's Alpha and Omega, he's beginning and ending, but before there was ever a beginning. I am. Hallelujah. I am. That's what Lord means there. I am. I am Yahweh. God said to Moses, I'm going to reveal myself to you in a name I've never been revealed to before. You're no longer just going to call me Elohim. Oh, hallelujah. You're no longer going to call me El Elyon. You're no longer going to just call me the Almighty. You're not just going to...
going to call me a creator, but I'm going to become a personal God to you and you're going to know me in a new dimension. You're going to know me through I am that I am. Hallelujah. I am the becoming one. I am the present one. I am here and I am now. Glory to God. I'm not going to do it. I am here. I'm not going to heal you. I am your healer. I have done it. I have paid it in full. I don't have to go hunt redemption for another soul who may walk in today. I've already secured that redemption. Glory be to God. He's done everything He's done on purpose. None of it's been done by accident. Glorify your name. Them that are sanctified and He that sanctifies, they're all one. For this cause, I'm not ashamed. Look up here at me and listen to me tell you one of the greatest truths you'll ever learn in your whole life of serving God. God never has been, ain't now, and never will be ashamed to call you His people. He glows over you. He glows when He mentions your name. He smiles big. How do you know? Because for six days he kept making. Couldn't find it. <coughs> Made to heaven. Yep. It was good. Something else was needed. Made the earth. Yes. It was good. Something else was needed. Made the flora, the fauna, the plants, the trees. Something else was needed. It was good, but something else was needed. Made the rocks and the hills and the rills and the valleys and the mountains. Said it was good. Weren't good enough yet. Then he made seas and rivers. My God, he told Job, have you ever said to the sea, come this far? I don't believe I Oh, holy! He come Oh, my, 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 my. I don't believe I worry about my $400 rent payment. If I'm serving a God who said to the sea, go no further. I don't think I'll worry about him taking that earache away. If I'm serving a God who said, I believe I want to, I believe I want Lake Michigan over here. Just give me a scoop. That's what the Bible said. Said he just sculpted it out, just scooped it out. I don't believe I'll worry about whether I'll have food on my table next week. Well, come on now. If God just blew one time with his nostrils and opened a hole big enough to Red Sea for three million people to walk across and didn't even get mud on their shoe, they walked dry shod. That's right. Congealed the depths of the sea. They look like jello. You could walk by and slap that thing and it just jiggle at you. A while ago, it was it was three miles deep. Come on. You couldn't find the bottom of it. God cut a path through there, found the bottom of it. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh my, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, all worry or to cease. All tears or to dry. All heartache or to mend. All nerves or to calm right now in this place to think about that I've got a God who done all that and still said it was good, but it ain't quite good enough. We got to go and I got to hush and I can He said, he said, ain't such good, but <laughs> he didn't make time to the fourth day. First three days, there was no time. First three days, there was no sun, no moon. The moon, the sun, the days, the weeks, the months didn't even come to the fourth day. For three days, this earth was lit up with the light of the glory of God. I don't worry a bit about it. I read in the Bible, he hadn't forgot what it looked like then. He said, you shall have no need for the light of the sun nor the moon, but the Lamb himself shall be the light of that city. Well, glory. I'll just give you a buffet style this morning. What else can you do? If God is wanting to express His Son. Hallelujah. He said, no, that's not enough. Then He made the animals. So we got a, we got an earth kingdom. We got a plant kingdom. We got an animal kingdom. 
Amen. He got through with all of that. Six days. Come down to the sixth. Looked inside himself. Uttered these words. Genesis 1, 20 said, Let us make man. Amen. Let us make it in our image and in our likeness. And let him have dominion over everything. Yeah. I've been making a statement to you in some of these messages we've been preaching about as a man thinking. I've been saying to you how God created the seed, then put the fish in. He created the soil and then put the plant in the soil. He created the firmament and then put the stars in. You take the plant out of the soil, it'll die. You take the fish out of the water, it won't survive. You take the stars out of the firmament, they become a meteor. They just burn till they're not gone anymore. You take man out of God, he'll die. Man's lifeline is the life of the Father. Hallelujah. It's the life of God in them. Can you say amen? In other words, you can switch to a new way of living. We just sang this morning, I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. What does that mean? That means you'll have to come to the mindset that your survival hood is not off the life that was in a bassinet when your mother and father laid you in it. But there's a soul life of God that you're, you, you obtained when you came forth from the Father. He put His Himself inside of you and you have the ability to rule and reign. Hallelujah. You're not a victim. You're not a uh, you're not an accident waiting to happen. You're not a prisoner of faith. You're not a chance for luck to grab up. You are purposed divinely in the heart of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Life is not a wreck. You're not just running down a freeway wide open, hoping not to hit nothing. You're orchestrating the steps of a good man. I honor my God. You've got a lot to shout about this morning. And very little to be born. Because God has ordained life for you. <laughs> not enough for all of that. He had to find the perfect form in which to express himself. He's looking for a home. Isaiah, what is 66? says, where is the house that you build for me? Isaiah 65 is solving for the answer. He said, rend them heavens, turn them down, pull them down here where we can touch heaven and heaven can touch us. It's better said probably in Matthew 6, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And you say that. Moses said it this way. He gave us, he was talking about when the Lord sent that glory in their midst. He said, and he gave us heaven on earth. The culture of God must become the culture of his people. If we think like him, sing like him, talk like him, walk like him. If he has full ownership over us, Poverty will leave. Sickness will depart. Pain will dissipate and disappear. Bad nerves will settle. Troublesome nights of no sleep will be relinquished because a new domain and a new rule has come on the ship. It's the rule in the domain of the king. Glory be to God. Uh, wherever the word of a king is, somebody tell me that scripture, there is power. Is that what the scripture said? Wherever, now let me tell you another scripture. The things of God are what? Deep matter. But it's in the heart of a king to do what? Search it out. When you take on that kingly anointing, you want to know all there is to know. You're not happy no more. But just the preacher preaching you a nice sermon and patting you on the back every Sunday. Something in you on Monday got an itching desire to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Can you say praise to God? And I tell you, I'm thankful that uh, both he that sanctifieth 
and they who are sanctified are all one. For this cause, he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. Did he say amen? And so God looks at that man, and he don't just say he's good. He said he's very good. And after he created that man, he never had to create nothing else. That ended the creation right there. He found his perfect order in man. In man. Listen to me. When man fell, he fell in his identity of who he really, truly was. In the day you eat thereof, you shall be like God. That's baloney. They could have never been any more like God than they were in that original form in which He created. And ever since then, man has brought us platterfuls of remedies to make us like God. And we've tried to do everything in the world to be like God. Hey, but one thing needs changing for you to be like God. That's who you see in your mind. You listen to me? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, we see through a glass darkly. But he spoke about an hour of maturity coming to the body of Christ. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I knew in part and I prophesied in part. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. Oh my. Oh yes, we see through a glass darkly. But, he said, we will see face to face. And know in the measure which we're known. I will come into the same realm of knowledge about God that he has about me. Now watch it. The scene changes. 2 Corinthians 3. The glass ain't dark no more. We all with open face. Beholding as in a glass. The glory of the Lord. Are changed into that same image. What image? That one I behold in that looking glass. That ain't a window. That's a looking glass. That's a mirror. That mirror of His image and His likeness. I go up to that Word, I look in that, that's the mirror. The Word's the mirror. I go up to that Word, I look in that Word. If I look right and if I look with an open face, that means if I don't have nothing that man has hung over my eyes, all this weak, beggarly, pitiful, poor, never amount to nothing, better not think more highly of yourself than y'all, you all that was false, accusations. Are you listening to me? I'll say that again. False accusations. That's just man wanting to remain in that old pitiful four state so he don't have to be responsible for the power level that you'll flow in when you do rise up to the level of which God's called. Because if you rise up to that full level, you'll have to create. You'll have to work miracles. You'll have to prophesy. You'll have to speak the word of the Lord. You'll have to walk into terrible situations that look nasty and mean and roll your sleeves up and say this ain't really what's happening here God's in control of this thing it ain't going to stay yeah you have to do all that when you walk in true identity nothing can divert your attention I'll tell on myself I was driving I wasn't going to bring this in this makes me look bad but I was driving uh, down the road, you know, Friday morning and, and uh, I was up got past the parkway and I don't know what the world happened on that side road there, but I never saw so many dump trucks and wreckers and everything else and cops and whatnot. And so I'm just looking, trying to figure out what in the world went on there. I happened to turn back around and my nose was out in the middle of the intersection and a red light just as red as it could be. I was flying right through that light. I locked that car up so I dumped everything in and it, it wasn't belted down over it. And, 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 and I thought I was safe and secure and I looked out the window and the state trooper was standing there in the window. And there's a woman and she looked at me and she turned her hand on her eyes like this and she said, keep them on the road, you know. Keep them on the road. <laughs> and I suddenly, I drove away. I was embarrassed. I thought, you know, embarrassing moments is, is just embarrassing. That's right. <laughs> 
One time pastor was doing a funeral procession. And if you ever rode with him, he never rode less than an inch or two off of somebody's tailgate in the back. Brother, he was qual tires every time he stopped there about if they stopped there. There he went right up on their tailgates, you know. And sure enough, they all stopped, and he squealed and turned sideways in a funeral procession, just spun right out. My nana just held her head down like that. But, but anyway, embarrassing moments. It was embarrassing. But as I drove away, the embarrassment started to dissipate, as it always does. You can get over anything. And as that was dissipating, the mind of God came on me. And I seen so clearly how that when we turn our focus off of where we're supposed to be going, we have worse accidents because we're believing that other way instead of the right way. The seventh day, what did God do? Nothing. It was all done. He rested. Right. Somebody said, where did he rest? Well, he must have rested in that man because he sure didn't rest in the flora and the fauna and the fish and the birds. No, he kept on creating. He couldn't find it. But when he found this man, he found the one that he wanted to express himself through. So with that said, let me read you that original verse I wanted to read you from Hebrews 2. Look with me in that next line. He that sanctified there, who are sanctified are all of one, which cause not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare my name unto my brethren. Now this is God talking. And in the midst of the church, hallelujah, Psalm says in the midst of the congregation, will I sing praise unto thee. <laughs> when God wants to get happy, He does it through His church. When God wants to fulfill destiny, He looks to His creation. When God wants to send forth a sign, He'll send it through you and I. Isaiah 8, what 18 says, Behold, I am the children that the Lord hath given unto me are for signs and wonders. You know, when we think about a sign, if you all had a camped out by the sign this morning, you would not benefit from what's going on in this service. A sign is that which leads you into something. It points the way. It brings you to the knowledge of what's going on. And so it is with Jesus who was the greatest sign. <laughs> I don't mean to get all these verses here. They keep coming to my, my spirit. Isaiah 9 said, the Lord started talking to old King Ahaz. Remember that? He said, they had asked a sign of me. He said, now don't ask it little. He said, ask it in the heavens above or the earth beneath. Paul Roberts had a plaque on his desk that said, make no small plans here. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh God, don't belittle it. Isaiah, Elisha said to Elijah, on a double portion, Elijah said back, you've asked a hard thing. The original Hebrew means you staked a great claim. You've put a big mark out there. But nevertheless, if you see me, you're going to have to get up in this realm and see me. Won't be enough for you to know me by the flesh. You've got to get in the spirit with me. All them other sons of the prophets said, won't know what happened to him. All he knows, he's gone. <laughs> Every spot he went, said, don't you want to give up yet? The Lord's going to take your master away. Why hang around him? Amen. He said, I know it. Hold your peace. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ahaz. Ask it big. Yeah. Dig down get a hold of something. Uh -huh. Raise it up. Yeah. And believe it to come to pass. And Ahaz over said, Oh, I won't tempt the Lord God. 
I'm not going to ask you. I'm glad sometimes God gives in spite of our ignorance. I'm glad sometimes that He gives even when we won't ask Him for it. Aren't you glad of that? No, but Elisha said, I'm going to ask. I didn't come all this way. They got to Jordan and he parted the Jordan. Brother, there are no boats on the other side. The only way he'll get back across is if he's got the same power. Are you willing to cross the river of change? I'm just asking you this morning, can you really turn loose of everything and still believe God's enough for you to get back to the other side? I don't just want to play religion. I don't just want to play church. I come in here and I go out. I want Him to be blessed me coming in and bless me going out. I want Him to bless my sitting down and I want Him to bless my uprising. Because when I uprise, when I rise up, I'm rising up to praise Him. Hallelujah. And I want Him to bless that. But my sitting down is when I sit down to hear the Word. Hallelujah. And I want Him to bless me to hear His Word. Not just my rising up, but my sitting down. When I get up to praise Him, I want Him to bless me. Let me dance. Let me cry. Let me shout. Let me laugh. Let me feel it. But when I sit down at His feet to have Him break the bread, bless me spiritually to receive that word that is coming. Elijah, Elijah said, no, I won't not ask it. I come this far to do this and I'm going to do it. I make the decision. I know there ain't no way across this river. I know the only way to get out of here is for me to have a manifestation of that glory. And Elijah said, well, I'll tell you what, if you see me, you'll get it. And while I have prayed, there was 50 sons of the prophets in Jericho and Jordan and every place of a Gilgal. But I don't know if 150 prophets that wouldn't get in the Spirit on the Lord's Day and see what was happening. So when all of a sudden that, we won't know what happened to Elijah. We hunted everywhere. They did do it. The Bible said they pressed on Elisha till he felt embarrassed not to let him go. He wasn't running. Looking. Why? Because he seen him. When he was taken up. He seen the glory. He seen the anointing. He seen the power. People who see the glory today ain't running with fear and fright. Hiding in caverns. Buying up rations. Burying cans. Buying up. <laughs> be not deceived, my children. Be not fretful and be not afraid. These are days that I've staked out in advance for your feet to stand in. You will not fail the task. You will not fall under the load. Thy back is strong and thy shoulders are broad. For thou art standing in my glory and in the covering of my spirit, saith the Lord. You will not shut the task. You will not shun. You will not run and flee from the scene. You will stand as Elijah, my Elisha, my servant did that day. Open your eyes in a new dimension and behold the glory of the Lord as it is revealed unto thee, saith the Lord. And in doing so, you will obtain resurrection power, saith God. You will go forth in a measure so strong that even when dead men fall against thee, they shall stand up right on their feet and walk this earth again because I have ordained thee unto life and unto life eternal and that which is everlasting and my glory is thy reward, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, praise the Lord. Can't give no sign. Won't ask it. Isaiah said, let me prophesy. This shall be the sign. A virgin shall conceive, bring forth a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. 
the government will be upon his shoulders of his kingdom there will be no ending he'll be from everlasting unto everlasting Anna walks in there and says this child set for a fall goes to hand him back to his mother anointing of God strikes her again she speaks as the oracles of God and said oh he's not just set for a fall he's set for a rising too glory be to God hallelujah the Bible said a righteous man will fall seven times but he'll get up again amen rejoice not against me oh my enemy when I have fallen I will rise again now you get up in Jesus name and you brush that dust off of you and shake yourself and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee Amen. You received the word of gladness today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you bless, you precious mother, stand and let me pray over you before we leave today. Hallelujah. Everybody in the congregation, reach your hands out to these mothers. Father, I thank you for every one of them. Every one of them, every child, every member of their family. I thank you for their ministries and their anointings, their callings and their giftings. I thank you they've been placed in the home, not by accident, but by divine providence of God's favor. I pray, O oh Lord, for the families of every mother represented here today to have the greatest healing explosion that they've ever had. Not only physically, but also mentally and emotionally in Jesus' name. I pray for close witness and for tight bonds to be formed right now between these mothers and their children. I pray for every one of these mothers to have frequent and full contact with their sons and with their daughters in a glorious and a melodious and harmonious way, not in strife and not in confusion, but in peace and in love. I pray, Lord Jesus, today for you to heap and heap and even more heaps of glory and blessing and honor upon these women of God. I sanctify them and separate them unto thee and pray health and blessings and abundance and prosperity upon them and their lives, their families, their homes in Jesus' name. Most of all, I pray that from this moment on they'll experience the greatest measure of manifested anointing and glory and power. I pray that just during days when they're sitting and to their selves, the glory of God will take them over and you will talk to them and speak to them and enhance their life with your beauty and with your presence. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a song and then I'm going to invite you to bring an offering for a dismissal this morning. Hallelujah. Let's sing, Let the Healing Begin in every home, in every nation. Amen. We want to bless all of you today in the name of the Lord. Thank you for coming. The men will go back in the back and get got some beautiful roses for the mothers. Don't leave without getting one. And as soon as you've uh, given the offering, you just feel free to be dismissed in any way that you can greet one another today. Let the healing begin. Bring in life and hope and true salvation. He's the light of the world. Taking away our deepest sorrow. He brings healing to all. Let the healing begin. Let the healing begin.
Thank you, Lord. All right, bless you now. Seven o'clock tonight. Amen.